Is Christian nationalism Christian? Um, no, it isn't. Being a Christian is about the values of inclusion. Christian nationalism is certainly not based on the values of the gospel. Good evening. I'm Sister Simone Campbell, Executive Director of Network and leader of Nuns on the Bus. Tonight marks an important next chapter in our story of who we will become as a nation. The very first paragraph of the scripture that informs the three Abrahamic traditions tells us the divine spirit breathed over the waters of chaos and brought forth a new creation. Encouraged by this promise that a new creation can come from chaos, let us pray. O oh, Divine Spirit, during the weeks and months ahead, stir our hearts and minds that we might fight for a vision that is worthy of you and your call to honor the dignity of all of your creation. In the name of all that is holy, O oh, Spirit, bring out of this time of global and national chaos a new creation. I got introduced to Zen by a Benedictine, a German Benedictine who'd become a Zen Roshi in Japan. For me, a Zen practice spoke to my heart in a way that was, oh, like coming home. I, I expressed it like, you know, jumping off the diving board into this cool water of refreshment. It was glorious. This became the ground of my spirituality, a ground of sinking roots deep into God's presence alive in the world and coming to treasure that we indeed are one body. So my experience was this, of meeting, of having in my imagination the sense of a sage saying, inviting me to go deeper. And that uh, being willing to do that was the biggest gift of my life ever and being willing to know that, how can I say this? Well, to know that we're one body. All of creation is one body. And I'm only just a little piece of it, but the freedom of knowing that means I just have to do my part. What I got pushed to understand was that if I was at odds with the God in them, I'm at odds with the God in me. Jesus speaks of the need to be born again. And I have a hunch that the new birth we need to look for is this chance for politics to move away from moneyed interest towards the people's interest. We are called in this challenging time to live the asceticism of letting ourselves weep for our nation and then take action. So that it will be, as Paul says in the, sec in the second reading, that it is an acceptable time when we hear the Lord's call to the day of salvation. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Join me. I need you. And quite frankly, you need me to work together to create this day of salvation. And Matthew says, 5,000 men were fed to say nothing of the women and children. That's a direct quote from the scriptures. Well, that made me mad. What are we, chopped liver, I ask you? So I prayed about it, and as you can tell, I have this kind of odd prayer life. And what I discovered was, I think Matthew only counted the ones who thought it was a miracle. The women knew they brought snacks from home, and the real thing was sharing. It wasn't that all of a sudden there were all these loaves, you know, really. Jesus walked towards those who were suffering and included them, welcomed them, invited them in. And in my uh, travels around the country hearing the stories of the LGBTQ community, it's anguish, it's anguish. The story of Nina, who her father was a Baptist preacher, she was thrown out of the family because she came out as a lesbian. And they said to her, if you want to be part of the family, you need to go to deprogramming, whatever they call the focus on the family piece. And she did it for a few months because she so wanted to be part of her family. And then finally she just realized it was destroying her. 
It was destroying her, so she ran away. What she had discovered in the process of doing her own work, her own therapy work with a therapist not in this deprogramming thing, is that she came to find love. That the piece that was missing was a love for herself, and then she could find a partner. And that they had a baby, and she was so excited. How could you not support Nina? I ask you, how could you not? Jesus is always about love and supporting love. For me, it's not about the rules. And often, this kind of reaction is about the rules. You have to play by the rules. These are the rules. And for me, it's much more about the lived reality of the gospel in the street, which has way fewer structures. And it's much more about trying to live in relationship to the now. The rules were important at a point, but then when spirituality and meditation deepens, it takes a whole different view and it's a broader frame. And if somebody gets so caught up in hate and hurt, fear, ooh, how are they ever gonna get free? And Jesus is about free. Fear not, fear not. Go, go off together. Preach the good news. Good news, is that good news? Is the bus good news? Mm -hmm. A lot of joy. The measure is joy. Do you find joy? There's God.